Can you just first say your name and what you do? Well, um, my name is Noni Barrow. I'm the owner and, well, I guess I'm the executive chef at Mabu Mabu, as, uh, which is an Indigenous business in um, Melbourne, Australia. And, and I guess you're about to start a new venture as well? Yeah, look, uh, we've just opened our second uh, place. Uh, so we've got a, I started off as a condiment business at a at South Melbourne Market in Melbourne. And um, now I, then I opened a cafe in Yarraville. And now we've just opened Big SO, which is our um, kitchen and bar as well in the city in uh, Melbourne. Yeah. Amazing. Norni, I know you were not born in Melbourne, but I know you live there now. So I'd like to start by asking you to describe Melbourne in a few sentences or adjectives to someone who's not familiar with the city. Oh, I love Melbourne. I, you know, it's been my home for many years now. Uh, so the best way I can describe it is that it's very easygoing. You know, you can always make a, you know, everybody is, it, you can go to a bar by yourself and make friends, you know. Um, so it is one of those relaxing cities where it's not very pretentious and it's very easygoing and people just like to have a chilled out and easy time. And why wouldn't you want to come here? I mean, it's the city of food and, you know, arts and yeah, there, it's just got a good package to it as well. 100%. It's been voted as the most livable city in the world for a number of years. So there must be something to it. Yeah, yeah, we we love it here. We're like, you know, uh, um, it's just an easy place to, you know, to be someone who wants to start on their own or if they want to make friends or if they just want to experience the great culture and the aspects of everything around here. It is, people are welcoming, very welcoming to live here. Awesome. Norni, so I think that you have a very fascinating story and I was hoping you can share a little bit about your background, where you grew up and also what led you to become a chef. I was born and raised in the Torres Strait, which is a group of islands um, on the tip of Australia. So in the pointy bit of Australia, in between the waters of Papua New Guinea and the tip of Australia and the, at Cape York. And um, I was lucky to be raised on tropical islands up there. So I, I grew up very traditional from my father's side. And yeah, I, I guess, you know, it's just one of those things where I'm, I guess I was lucky. I was lucky to be raised and, and I love Australia. I mean, like we have a beautiful country and there's so many, so many amazing things that are here. Um, and I, I guess I just keep exploring more of my own home country, which is always really good. In terms of uh, kind of culinary exper uh, experiences that kind of led you to become a chef, was there? It was always going to be in the cards, I think, <laughs> for me. Um, my dad started me very early on cooking. So as soon as I could kind of see over the stovetop, uh, I've, been, I've been cooking my whole life. And food and cooking has always, um, a, is always a surrounded in our culture. So, you know, from a young age, we're, we're already catching fish ourselves and eating it down at the rocks. And, you know, I've, I've been pickling since I was a kid, you know, out and about, running about, picking mangoes and tamarinds off trees and making my own pickles from them as well. So I guess cooking was always going to be in the cards for me. And, and I guess the inspiration you took from where you grew up and how it all worked, you, you kind of have a bit of a mission to, to bring it all to a wider audience. Can you talk about your mission, mission as a chef? Yeah, it is. I mean, like I wanted to showcase my culture, you know, and the cuisine I grew up with and also just showcase uh, on the amazing Australian produce that we have as well. And all the native produce that we have around Australia from each state is always it's so special to use and I wanted to really um, showcase that and 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 I, I'm on a mission to get you know more Australian native ingredients into everybody's pantries as well so you know this is a great opportunity of doing it in um, you know a bigger space for us and and be able to showcase all these like fantastic foods that you know are on offer here in you know our big tropical island that we have <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I'll tell you that for most of the listeners of this show, 
uh, Aboriginal or Torres Strait flavors and ingredients will be somewhat of an exotic concept. So I was hoping maybe you can do a very crash course introduction to what those flavors and ingredients are. We have so many here because we have so many of, you know, from fruits to spices. And I try and talk about a lot of the spices that we have here where we have our own native peppers, you know, and our native pepper is called pepperberry. It's, you know, primarily um, grown in the colder parts of Australia. So, and it uh, comes from Tasmania originally. And it is one of those things that is spicy like Szechuan pepper, but it actually is very clovey. So you can use it for almost like sweet and savory. And uh, it gives a purple color as well when you use it because it still sits on that berry side. So we have all these native peppers and then we have things like that are called wattle seeds as well, which is almost gives you a caffeine flavor to it. And they're just coming from a seed. So um, when you grind the seeds down, we make lattes out of them and, and use them for baking and stuff because they give you off this bitter chocolate and coffee sort of hazelnut flavor to them as well of of because they because wattle seeds sit on that acacia side there are so many different types of them and colors as well that well you can use for almond meal or because it's a natural caking element to it as well that it's a combining thing that was used in baking to combine your flowers together so yeah, there's so many. I could I could go on and on, and uh, and I'm a big um, sea succulent fan as well. And we have all these great um, succulents that are similar to if you were to have cactus, but more of the salty sort of stir fries. And you can use them to pickle with, and and to use them in stir fries, or you can just have them in nice, really fresh salads. And and that, those are the things I really enjoy about um, the produce that we have from all of our tropical fruits, but then we have all these great bitter fruits as well of wild peaches or or we call them quandongs or our desert, our limes here are amazing because we have so many, so many amazing native limes from finger limes that people may hear about that give you these beautiful pearls or desert limes, which give you this um, very intense flavor too as well. And then yeah we have many myrtles as well here in australia so there's different types of myrtle that we can use which is our common one is lemon myrtle so it gives you that tanginess but then you get cinnamon myrtle will give you this sweet finish you know of cinnamon flavors and then you've got aniseed myrtle that gives you a and these are all leaves as well so when you grind them down aniseed myrtle gives you a licorice flavor that comes through so i don't know there's so many there's so many well, sounds like it. So amazing. Uh, thanks for that introduction. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Big Esso. I know you're you're just kind of launching, but give us a tiny preview to the menu and um, what's going to be your signature dish there, one or two. Tell us about it. Well, I use a lot of game meats on my menu here. So I grew up, uh, the menu here at Big Esso is basically my childhood of growing up and what I grew up with. So you have things from periwinkles, sea snails, to wild boar, to um, emu, crocodile, you know, all of this stuff is on there. Um, yams, yams, yams. I can't say, tell you about all the amazing yams that we have here as well. And yeah, a lot of traditional sort of stuff that I grew up with and making a little bit more interesting um, for people to come and enjoy. Sounds super interesting. How does crocodile taste? Well, how would you classify it? Ah, oh, crocodile is is awesome. Like it has its own flavor on its own, and you know it is one of our classic dishes. And yeah, it it has its own flavor. It sort of sits in between that sort of um, cal like uh, a bit like in between squid and and fish. You know, so it has those two elements together. So it it's really beautiful to use. And um, yeah, we. We, uh, those things are staple things that we will always have here at Big Esso that you can try. So what's one signature dish? Just choose a dish, your favorite dish from the menu. Uh, my favorite dish is, well, it's it's got to be the periwinkles, but uh, <laughs> but that's only because uh, I'm an island girl. So <laughs> so periwinkles are our, our sne sea snails. And um, yeah, so we, we get sea snails here, we call them periwinkles and, 
and they're really great. We put them in this like native broth that we use with all this flavor and then you can pin them out and just hook them out yourself and have with like, you know, a cacala um, aioli on the side. So they're really great snack. That's probably my favorite, but I'm a, I'm a big emu fan. So, you know, our emu is probably one of the best things that we have on a menu as well, because um, I also cook a lot of kangaroo tail which is um, one of my favorite dishes. And, and it is actually one of our biggest sellers um, that we have across our venues. And it's just one of the awesome things that um, I like to use. So, sounds so amazing. So, so interesting. I, I'd love to get um, out there and, and try it one day uh, when, you know, the world <laughs> is open, but back again. Hopefully soon, cross our fingers soon. Yeah, hopefully we all get to visit like you know from all over and yeah we look forward to that time coming and um we know it's all been very tough and we're all doing the best things that we can during this COVID period but i i have you know high hopes that when we do get to open up we'll get to experience so many awesome things again i bet i bet uh, norni so the restaurant will also have a bar and uh, can, can, can you tell us about it and what kind of surprising drinks we can expect there? Well, we, um, we are actually an all Australian bar. So um, we only serve Australian made spirits and Australian made wines and, and beers. And, um, and we use companies and distilleries that do great things for the environment, plus work with communities here in, in Australia to pick and make native um, infused um, cocktails that we do too as well and so a lot of our spirit lists and stuff um, have native ingredients in them as well so that you're you're actually tasting great gins and whiskies that have all you know um, come from these great Australian companies that you know from 78 degrees to applewood to um, seven seeds green ant gin you know um, yam vodkas all of that kind of stuff is um, what we've got on the shelf here for people to experience. Fabulous, fabulous. So how would you describe culinary scene in Melbourne? I've read somewhere that uh, you once said that with all your food initiatives and, and um, well, establishments in, in Melbourne, you want to bring a bit of color into the city. What did you mean by that? Well, I just, I think the city for, especially for Fed Square where we are, it needs a bit more vibe, you know, um, it, it was lacking in the, I think we, we bring a, ver a bit of fun. <laughs> we, we're a fun company and uh, we like to have a good time. And so um, I guess, you know, we're bright and bold as well. You know, we, we don't come with like light, pat <laughs> very dull colors. We're, you know, you can see us as soon as you hit the square that our big giant red and blue doors and our sign exist. Cause, and that's what I mean. Like, you know, we bring a vibrant of color into the scene and we're not some, you know, it's, it's like having a beach holiday every day, you know, <laughs> basically we, we really wanted to brighten up uh, at a space that, you know, people could feel welcome to come and they can and they can hang out and feel like it's their you know they they can be welcome to stay and i think that's it you know it's it's about bringing a different kind of um atmosphere and and a bit more color to the venue and it's not just actual color it's it, it's multiculturalism it's you know it, it includes all of our beautiful you know um nations and first nations people into a, a great space and and i guess you know that is the most important thing and i'm i'm all about color you know i'm just like color 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 if i can't throw in, if i can't put another color from the rainbow in there i'll work it out you know <laughs> love it this is great and it is a business district of melbourne right so maybe some color can do <laughs> We are right in the center of the city and um, I think it, it needs it. You know, we need a bit of happiness in here and we need to bring that back. And it's a great timing for us to open up here and, and showcase how amazing indigenous business can really bring people together. And um, in, in the space is just going to be awesome. So you mentioned Federation Square and um, 
I, I know that the location has a special meaning for you. Do you mind just briefly talking why? I guess uh, it has a meaning for everybody, really, you know, in the sense of our community here and it's about being visible and and having it on the Birarongmar as well, you know, is is a privilege. You know, I, I'm not from this country, you know, it, the Wurundjeri people and the of the Kulin Nation and the Birarong people are, you know, it's the land that I'm on, their land that I'm on representing my business here because I'm an island girl. So it is really great to be able to bring it back to the river, you know, and open a Indigenous business here is really special, you know, and I, I get to showcase that and bring bring a bit of, you know, that back into the city. You're doing great, great work, Norni. Last question. So what are your favorite culinary experiences in the city, aside from Bigesso, of course? And what, what kind of um, experiences visitors shouldn't really miss? Oh, Melbourne in general has so much to offer, you know? Our food scene is just amazing, like, you know, from the city has just grown and grown and grown on how much great cuisine there is here in the cities and and not just that in our local areas as well i mean there's just so much to see from the river to you know our beautiful wineries to our beautiful beaches and i think that there is just so much here to you know to really sink your teeth in because not only do, do you get to experience all the, you know, it is still a major city, so it does bring those elements, but go, go, go to the, like, you know, don't just stay in the city, go to the closest suburbs around the city as well, because there's so many great things from the Yarra Valley. Oh, there's just, yeah, we've, we've just got this great atmosphere here of so many things that you can always do and experience. So um, I guess, like, I don't know. I'm a lifer, though. I, lo I love Melbourne, like, you know, and I love Australia. But, um, yeah, there's just so much to do in Melbourne. You know, you can't turn ahead without. And, uh, I mean, you, you might have to put a, extra pins on your pants when you come to Melbourne because you are probably going to eat your way through it. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're going to have to wear some elastic pants to come to Melbourne just to let out a button because... Um, the culinary experience here is amazing, but, you know, we have a beautiful arts culture here as well. So, you know, there's always amazing art that, that is being showcased here in Melbourne. So I'm a big supporter of that as well. And and when you come to Mabu at Big so we're very lucky that we had two artists, you know, do be beautiful murals inside um, here. I can actually just bring you across. So if you go across there. You can see a mural on our wall over there. Um, and um, that was done by a young artist called Aretha Brown. And she um, also worked for us, um, you know, before she went off to be an amazing artist. And uh, I also have, most of my tables have uh, a more established artists printed on them as well. So I guess, you know, the arts and the food industry here is just so amazing. And those are one of the biggest things I love about Melbourne. You know the and and the atmosphere of you know just hanging out with people and having a good time and i guess like friends and family over time for me here in melbourne has just grown and grown in in this industry and i guess you know i'll i'll never leave <laughs> i'll never leave melbourne i won't leave melbourne you need to open more restaurants more restaurants more bars <laughs> more color in the city <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'll ask them. Yeah, more coloring of the city. So, yeah, there's just so much to see. I I rec totally recommend if you want to travel here. There's just there's an abundance of things that you can do here. Amazing, Norni. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. I think you're wonderful, doing great work, and uh, I, I definitely. I've been to Melbourne before, but I do want to visit again. And uh, when I do, I'll, I'll be there to check things out. Yes, awesome. Yes, let me know. We'll book, we'll book a table and have like you know some native gins. We'll have a we'll have a native gin together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the green and gin, porfa. So. Norni, all the very best with your with BSO and, and the venture. I'll watch the space, but uh, I'm sure you'll do very well. So thanks again for your time. And um, yeah, we'll be in touch. Bye. Thank you. Cheers.